Welcome to this Salt Lake City mayoral debate. Our venue is Mastery Connect, an educational software company located here on Main Street. I am Ben Winslow with Fox 13 News, and I'm joined by Jason Mathis, the executive director of the Downtown Alliance, which is sponsoring this debate between the two candidates for mayor. Now, on the right, uh, two-term incumbent mayor Ralph Becker and his challenger, sitting on the left, Jackie Biskupski, a former member of the House of Representatives for the state of Utah. Thank you both for joining us today. Now, for the next hour, they will take questions and give their views on key issues impacting downtown Salt Lake City. So here is how this is going to work. For the first part of this debate, Jason and I will ask some questions. And then for the second half of the debate, we will take questions from members of the audience who have filled out questionnaire cards. Right off the top, we're going to begin with opening statements. Uh, from each of the candidates. We flipped a coin and Jackie Raskupski uh, won and chooses to go second, so we will begin with Ralph Becker, your opening statement, Mayor. Uh, thank you, good day. Uh, Salt Lake City has been on a roll. We're achieving unparalleled prosperity and business is flourishing with new businesses moving in. People are flocking to our city. We have more options now how we get around, whether it's by vehicles or transit or bikes or walking. Uh, our downtown has a vibrancy that was unimaginable eight years ago. And Salt Lake City is at the top of virtually every national ranking around our economy and our quality of life. I've built my career as a public servant, as a business owner, and as a mayor around working with my community to create a vision and take actions that have led to Salt Lake City's unprecedented success. And my service as mayor and plans for the next four years exemplify my dedication, my collaborative style, and long-term approach to our community. We have so much to do to achieve our rightful place as a great American city. We need to finish the lifetime protections for our mountains through Mountain Accord. We need to complete our actions to addressing our troubling homelessness situation and invigorate the depot area. We need to implement the 5,000 Doors Initiative that is creating 5,000 affordable doors in our city in the next five years. We need to continue to improve mobility options. We need to implement the Enterprise SLC, building on the improvements in permitting and businesses that we see through Google Fiber and Goldman Sachs here in this building and in their new building downtown. And we need to continue to have the fiscal discipline to keep Salt Lake City from raising property taxes. I want to continue to provide for Salt Lake City as we move forward to become a great American city. Thank you, ma'am. Jackie. Thank you. I'm running for Salt Lake City Mayor because we have a lot happening in our city that is happening without the input of our local business owners and our community members. I have heard from several people who live in this city that they are not able to get the bus service they need, that they are not able to even reach the current administration to share their concerns about crime. I am confident that we have a real opportunity to move our city in a very positive direction. There is, in my family history, a great deal of entrepreneurship. My parents were both small business owners. I've been a small business owner. I know what it takes to get a business off the ground. I also know what it takes to keep it running. And when you're running a business in a city that is filled with very thick red bureaucratic tape, it makes it very difficult for you to utilize your resources to be successful in our economy. We have a lot of startup companies that are being mentored right here in our city, but most of those companies are not choosing to locate in Salt Lake City. They're going to other parts of the state, they're going to other counties, because it is extremely expensive here. We have very high fees that we charge, and for every employee that you bring into this local economy, we charge you for that as well. It's not friendly. We have a real steady opportunity to streamline our business opportunities here, 
to streamline our processes, to make sure that all our conflicting ordinances that are affecting the businesses here today are sorted through and that we finally decide to land on one particular place. Because right now, people in our offices are making random decisions because of all the conflicts. One day you get one answer, the next day you get another. Wonderful, thank you. Um, well, we're going to begin with questions first and you get one minute uh, responses just so that everybody uh, is aware and uh, Jason's going to ask uh, the first question. And before we do that, we want to thank our audience for their reserve. We've asked people not to clap or cheer or boo. This isn't a pep rally. It's really about talking to you two and, and hearing your views on the subject. So thanks to the audience for their, um, their very gracious listening. The first question is a real hard one. Um, describe your three biggest accomplishments as a public servant. And since Ralph Becker got to go first last time, we'll ask Jackie Viscoopsi to start with this one. Sure. I served in the Utah legislature for 13 years, and during that time, I was consistently chosen to serve on business-related committees. I served for 13 years on the Economic Development Appropriations Committee. Most of the time I was there, I was on Business Labor Standing Committee. I was chosen to serve on the Health Care Reform Task Force and the International Trade Commission. I have a very extensive business background as a small business owner and somebody who has worked in corporate America. Our city needs a leader who understands business and all the opportunities that we are missing here today. I will also say that I've been working for the sheriff for eight years. And during that time, I've been a policy advisor and project manager. We have over 2,000 employees. And we have done great things in his current administration. Great, and Ralph Becker. Uh, thank you. Um, I think I would cite uh, the three items. Uh, probably number one, since I've been mayor, the non-discrimination ordinance. When I came into office, uh, it was a goal, I think, to give equal protection to everyone in our community and to provide a welcoming, inclusive environment. Salt Lake City passed the first non-discrimination ordinance that extended protections and housing and employment for our LGBT community. It was adopted by more than 20 local governments around the state and finally this year adopted statewide. Uh, second, I would say in working again with our community, uh, responded to the ski link proposal which would have had devastating impacts on our mountains and brought together, spearheaded the effort with all local governments, with the ski resorts, the environmental community, um, and all of the organizations, including the, the Chamber of Commerce, to bring together everyone and sign a charter this year to protect our mountains, protect our lands, our resources, and provide a pathway for a transit future in our mountains. And third, I would cite uh, the so many times I've had an opportunity to listen to constituents while I've been in public service, to address concerns they have, and find solutions. One example. I was called by a constituent at the top of, of Main Street that UDOT was on their property putting in a large light pole and wanted to know what they could do about it. I went to work, work with the state, work with local officials. We stopped UDOT. We got that pole moved off of their property so they could have the peace and comfort of their own home. They were both, they were a couple in their 80s and desperately needed help. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we've we've you. run out of time, unfortunately. Now we're gonna ask another question. We have a lot of ground to cover today. Uh, Mr. Becker, you have made it a priority to clean up Pioneer Park, uh, to get rid of drugs and other crime. Uh, the interim police chief uh, has said that other parts of downtown are starting to see more crime, possibly as a result of this crackdown. So the question I ask you, and then of course I'll ask your, your challenger, what are you gonna do about that? Well, uh, when I came into office, um, I worked with the whole community around Pioneer Park and including, again, the Chamber of Commerce and the folks who worked in that businesses there and the homeless providers. And we came up with an approach that, in a way, solved the problem in Pioneer Park and moved it, unfortunately, into another area of downtown in the depot area. Um, we are doing the same thing now in the depot area and we're finding great success. We will chase these problems and these issues and work both to provide the services and to provide the protection wherever those problems go and continue to find solutions. So we are chasing the issue. We were anticipating that as we cracked down and we provided additional services around the shelter area, that it would move. We are now following that. 
throughout different parts of our city, and you'll be continuing to find success as we've seen actually crime drop throughout the city over the last 60 days. Ms. Biskupski, what would you do about it? Yes, I, we need to be much more strategic in our law enforcement effort. Uh, what we're seeing with drug trafficking in this city is not just information that uh, our local law enforcement agency understands. So does the sheriff's office, and so do other law enforcement agencies. If we start collaborating and sharing intelligence around the drug trafficking, which is probably our biggest problem right now, I think we'll find that that intelligence sharing will generate a very strategic effort to getting to the source of where those drugs are coming from to begin with. The other piece of this is it's absolutely true. As we keep drawing law enforcement people into our downtown community, our neighborhoods are being uh, criminalized by burglary and theft, and, and it becomes just too burdensome. We're also driving the drug trafficking onto our tracks line, and that is coming into the Sugar House area on the S line. So now we have a lot of drug trafficking happening in the Sugar House Park and the Fairmont Park. So we have to be much more strategic in our efforts. Awesome. Um, next question, we'll, go, we'll start with Jackie Biskupski. If you are elected, how will downtown look in four years? How will you measure your success as mayor? You know, one, uh, we, will, we will change how we service uh, the homeless population. And the changes that will be coming through the different committees that are working right now, through the nonprofit organizations, through Salt Lake County government, will be um, all folded into a bigger picture, a real cooperative effort to change the way we are servicing the homeless population today. We will become much more effective in the care and the treatment, and we will enable people who are homeless today to become independent again. Another factor that we need to be really focused on is how we are developing local businesses. We have five business schools in our city, and we are not working collaboratively with them to make sure we are generating real opportunities for startups to really also collaborate with the venture capitalists and making sure that we are creating a much more sustainable economy that is really what the future holds for us. Mayor Becker. Uh, thank you. Well, it's going to be hard to beat these last four years where we've seen our permitting values ex explode um, and where we're seeing housing and folks just flocking into downtown Salt Lake. But I'll mention a few items. Certainly the completion of the Eccles Theater in Regent Street in 111 South Main at the core of our city, which extends, will, will extend a vibrancy all through our downtown area. I think continuing again in the partnership approach that I've taken all the way through my administration around housing types, around improving our streetscapes, around taking the Utah Theater and completing the redevelopment of that, um, and by bolstering our mobility options for getting around downtown. Uh, finally, I would say also uh, just looking at the range of businesses, large and small, and how we continue to provide the right opportunities for everyone can succeed, and homelessness addressing homelessness, taking the results of today's actions we're seeing, uh, and having that depot area thrive with our homeless population. All right, next question. Uh, before Salt Lake City was chosen as the site for the new state prison, the legislature allowed whichever city was selected to uh, enact a sales tax increase. Now, assuming that the prison is in fact built here, and I know there's some talk of litigation about that, would you, as mayor, use that sales tax increase? You know, right now I'm not planning to use that sales tax increase. I feel like if we are heavily focused on um, creating a much stronger local economy, we won't need it. Right now we are on our third community economic development director. We are on, we've had two economic development directors and that position isn't even filled today. What I can tell you is if we have a very heavy focus on a strong economic development team with diverse backgrounds and a clear understanding of what our real opportunities are, working with GOED and EDC Utah, building a much stronger relationship there, we will generate the revenue this city needs to function on. We won't need to do more tax increases. 
I would propose not taking advantage of this actually wonderful tool that we work for the Downtown Alliance on and the Chamber on of having a local option sales tax that would only be implemented by the actions of our city council. Uh, as an uh, opportunity to raise revenues in a different way that spreads those costs out more equitably between uh, city and non-city residents who use our city. Uh, but I don't see any need or reason today to try to implement that tax. This city is booming. Our revenues are going up. Uh, we are seeing additional revenues come in from some actions that I and others have taken in this city around, uh, around just both our development and around things that are happening from outside of the city like the e-fairness actions that will bring in additional revenues and transportation revenues. So I do not see a need today to use it, but I think it is a wonderful option for us to look in the future at equitably apportioning our raising of revenue among city and non-city residents that take advantage of our beautiful city. Great. Thank you. Um, Mayor Becker, we'll start with you on this question. Acknowledging the critical role of downtown residents to a thriving city center and local economy, how can the mayor best support urban residential development and how would you lead this effort? Yeah, thank you. You know, uh, those, I'm a planner and those of us who have been around planning, I was on the planning commission and work, have worked in this city for many, many years. And the key to the success of a downtown is a 24-7 population. And uh, it's something we've been striving for from back in the early 90s when I was on the planning commission and today we are seeing it happening and we're seeing the vibrancy downtown as a result. A key element of both providing for the market housing, which is taking care of itself, is making sure we have a range of housing for people of different incomes and different needs. Our 5,000 Doors initiative was, was launched at the beginning of this year to make sure we have that range of housing types and affordability is not only well underway, we are well ahead of schedule. And I want to make sure in partnership again with our business community, with actions we can take as a city using our funds and other funds that come into this city, uh, that we provide for the housing and for visitors who are coming in the city in a way that provide for that incredible vibrancy downtown from a 24-7 population. Ms. Biskupski. Yes. Well, what I've heard from the younger generation that they, they want to have families. They want to have small families. They, they don't want to have to take care of yards but they can't find housing they can afford in our city, and it's forcing them to move out. So without a doubt, we have to implement inclusionary zoning. We have to build diverse housing opportunities. We also need to really tackle the uh, very aggressive panhandling. It's, it's not a friendly environment for a family to want to live in. And so we really need to push for a significant kind of public campaign around the meters that you're working on, but also around just having information that is constantly being shared with the public uh, about not providing funds to the panhandlers, that if we stop that, we can stop that business. And it has become a business in our city. This is a question for both of you. Uh, what do you think is holding Salt Lake City back from being known as one of America's great urban centers? Mayor Becker, you want to go first? Yeah, thank you. So I think, uh, fortunately, <laughs> certainly in my time in office, Salt Lake City is being recognized increasingly around the country and around the world as a great city. And a lot of that has become just from the great fortune we've had, the prosperity we've had. But it is primarily, I think, because of the quality of life. We live in a natural setting unlike an unparalleled way any other city in the country with these mountains and access to our deserts. We have incredible neighborhoods. We have an increasingly vibrant downtown. I'd say what is holding us back, if anything, uh, while we're getting all this attention and people moving and moving their businesses and, and moving, moving to this city, is to make sure we protect those resources. That means the mountain resources through the efforts that we're doing in Mountain Accord. It means protecting and holding on to strong neighborhoods. It means addressing these persistent problems that we see around the country, around homelessness, and LA just declared a disaster literally around their homeless situations, and making sure we provide that environment where everyone can be successful and enjoy this as a place to live, work, and play. Ms. Biskupski. You know, I think uh, for us here locally, one of the things that I've consistently heard from especially the business community is that 
anywhere but Salt Lake because our planning and zoning process is so difficult to maneuver through, whether you're a corporation or a small business owner. The other piece to this is our air quality. We need a very strong collaborative leader who is willing to work with all of the mayors along the Wasatch Front and all of our new businesses that are coming into this state, especially the IT companies that are so green and are now down in Utah County, they have a real strong desire to develop our area in a way that is very friendly to the people in, in the local economies. And, and our air quality is our biggest factor. We really have to get our hands around that and move in a very positive, strong direction to help clean up our air. What economic development tools could be better leveraged to support business development, both citywide and then specifically downtown, and how would you propose to apply them? And we can start with, we can start with um, Ms. Biskupski. Sure. Uh, you know, we have, we have um, a real strong RDA here, um, but we don't do enough to work with our CDA and our EDAs. We don't do enough. Uh, collaboration with GOED or EDC Utah. So we are missing out on real opportunities and those are significant tools in building a strong economy. Uh, we also have, um, we have companies like Boom Startup here who are mentoring 30 to 40 startup companies any given year and then most of those companies are leaving. We have we don't have the strong economic development team that we need to make sure we are recruiting those companies and collaborating so that we can retain those businesses here and help them develop. And we also don't have the office space. We have to kind of change up our game a little bit on how we are developing office space here so that the smaller startups can acquire the spaces they're looking for. So I think those are key. Mayor Becker. Uh, we benefit, I think, enormously, not both from this great prosperity that we're seeing in our city that is unparalleled, uh, but we have taken the time in the last year or so to go, you know what, we should not be sitting on our laurels. And we asked uh, Natalie Gochner to come in and give us a critique, working with the business community, and, and tell us what we can do better. And that path, called SLC Enterprise, gives us a very clear path forward and has been incredibly well received across the board in the business community. So it does include things like doing a better job, which I've been proposing from the time I came into office, of really merging our redevelopment efforts with the rest of our economic development efforts. We have in place now a full-time cabinet-level economic development director, which we were putting in place before, but it's consistent with those recommendations. We need to take our city resources and these incredible partnerships we have with the chamber, I feel like I walk arm in arm on virtually everything in our city. Uh, to keep moving forward. So it's the partnerships, it's improving the permitting, it's going through our ordinances, and it's always looking to make improvements to build on this incredible prosperity we have today. All right, next question, I'm going to start with Ms. Biskupski. Uh, you recently, or your campaign recently, posted a photo on Twitter of a $25 parking ticket yeah. uh, that you had received downtown. Mm -hmm. You said that the meter was broken, that the ticket was unfair, and it shows that, quote, City Hall is not keeping up with basic services. Uh, <clears throat> is parking a big problem in downtown Salt Lake City? And what would you do to fix it? You know, um, the broken parking meter issue, I think, is a big one. Uh, we should be able to track whether a parking meter is functioning or not functioning. And there are many blocks in this city where there is only one parking meter. I don't think we want to encourage people to jaywalk across the street to try to get to a parking meter. If we can identify, and we should be able to, that a parking meter isn't functioning, we shouldn't be citing people for not paying for their parking. The other piece to this, I think, is we probably need to look at hours of operation. I spoke to so many seniors on this campaign trail who simply do not like coming downtown anymore. They don't like having to pay to go to dinner. And they feel like uh, it's easier to just go to Sugar House and not pay, or it's easier to go to Holiday and not pay, and still find quality restaurants that they're looking for. Mr. Becker, is parking a big problem downtown? 
Uh, parking is, has been, and I'm afraid always will be a big problem downtown. Not because so much of parking availability. We have 15,000 stalls downtown. Uh, the problem is it's difficult for people to know where to park and to easily find parking. Again, working with our Chamber of Commerce and our, and our merchants downtown, we completely revamped and overhauled our parking downtown on the streets. Those parking stations, uh, we're getting actually great plaudits for how well it is now working. It hasn't always been that way, but we, we made some improvements and it's working really well. I'm sorry, Ms. Biscucci, that you got a parking ticket, and I hope if there was a mistake that we can get that remedied, because we have a good process to go before a parking officer and have that, have that handled. But you know, uh, we've been working with our merchants. Downtown is not only just sort of growing and prospering, people are finding it more e easier and easier all the time to be able to get around downtown. And uh, uh, the parking stations are working exceptionally well today. So I have no apologies. Uh, it's a little bit of a change for people, but we're getting a great response from our public. All right, we have time for one last question here. Let us talk about uh, electronic billboards. Uh, some billboard companies created a political action committee to promote everyone running against Mayor Becker. Now, Mr. Becker, you have been an outspoken opponent of billboards, uh, saying that they are unattractive, that they junk up the city. Uh, Ms. Biskupski, I'm going to start with you. What is your position on these billboards? You know, uh, uh, the electronic billboards are actually used quite extensively by law enforcement when someone goes missing. Um, so there are some real quality uses for the electronic billboard industry, especially along our freeways. Um, but what happened in that situation is really about campaign finance reform. I mean, it is really critical that people stand up and push for real change, uh, like United Citizens are, where you can't create these monstrous packs to affect outcomes in a campaign. I, I think that kind of reform is necessary and I think uh, as we move forward in our city that we need to push for those types of changes. Mr. Becker. You know we have a beautiful city and a beautiful setting and uh, I do not want to see Salt Lake City become Las Vegas and if it was left to the billboard companies that's what would happen. They want to electrify all their billboards, they want to add more billboards. And there's no question throughout my career on the Planning Commission and the Legislature and now as Mayor I've tried to protect the visual quality and the beauty we have in our city. And that means limiting billboards and limiting this incredible proliferation. Um, my opponent and I couldn't be more different on these issues. Throughout her career in the legislature, she voted to override local control. She voted to support special protections for billboard that no other businesses in this state have. And I voted against having those kinds of changes and special protections take place. And now over $150,000 skirting our laws uh, to have been put into my opponent's campaign to help her become mayor so they can get a return in terms of becoming much more of a Las Vegas style uh, city in our neighborhoods, in our gateways, and I think it's unfortunate. All right, uh, we are going to take a quick break. When we return, the candidates are going to answer questions from our audience here at Mastery Connect. We'll be right back. You're watching the You Decide Salt Lake City Mayoral Debate. And welcome back to our Salt Lake City Mayoral Debate. I'm Ben Winslow with Fox 13 News alongside Jason Mathis of the Downtown Alliance. Salt Lake City Mayor Ralph Becker and his election challenger Jackie Biskupski have already answered a few of our questions about the state of downtown. Now it is time for some questions we have had submitted by members of the audience here at Mastery Connect. I will mention um, at the end of the last segment, uh, Mayor Becker mentioned that Jackie Biskupski as a representative had voted uh, to support billboard companies. We wanted to give Jackie 30 seconds to respond to that comment. Uh, thank you. I, I think what I truly want to respond to is um, a blatant lie that you were just told. Um, I have not uh, corresponded with the billboard industry. I had nothing to do with the creation of that pack. Uh, the design of any billboard that they created or the fund that they have acquired to do the billboards that they did during the primary. Um, that was a blatant lie and I think it's unfortunate the mayor has stooped to that level. I appreciate the ability though 
to respond to it. Thank Mayor, you. We'll, we'll give you 30 seconds to, to answer that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, whether the funding comes directly uh, to the candidate with a $7,500 contribution limit that we've set by law from any individual or corporation, or whether for the first time in our city a separate pack is set up and literally over $100,000 was put into that pack by one company to skirt the laws to support my opponent, to me, the direct, indirect effect, we know what the effort is, what the approach is, and I think the actions speak for themselves. All right, it's time to move to uh, some audience questions here. Uh, Jason, you've got the first question from uh, a member of our audience here at Mastery Connect. Great. Um, Salt Lake City is home to the headquarters of an international church, which is the largest employer and landowner in downtown. As mayor, how will you and your office approach and engage with the LDS church? Um, and I believe uh, we started with the mayor first last time. We'll sure. start with Jackie Biskupski yes. this time. Um, just this week, I met with the bishopric to talk about what um, properties that they have that um, they are not interested in developing, but to also talk about development opportunities in our city and the direction that things are going. You know, what are their big interests? And one of the things we talked about was City Creek um, and how things are going there, but also what we can be doing to help Gateway come out of the position it is in today and where we can be heading. Um, there's real opportunity from a local investor to acquire that property and a strong desire um, by myself and others to make sure that it is successful. Um, we need to make sure that all of our um, main sources of opportunity for commerce are very successful and highly trafficked and that there's real opportunity to create a very diverse new gateway um, that is very exciting and I'm very pleased about that meeting. Mr. Becker. Uh, the LDS Church is the largest property owner and institution in Salt Lake City and really in the state of Utah in terms of its influence. Uh, I've, I'm glad to say that when it comes to working on their properties and what happens downtown particularly, the Elders Church has been an incredible partner. I meet with people all over, mayors and others all over the country. And it is so rare to have an institution that is the lead institution who has as strong a commitment to the success of our downtown and our community as I see with the LDS Church. Uh, we see that in the results uh, whether it is City Creek Center, which is an incredible development and quality that sets a new standard for Salt Lake City. We see it with the new theater and the new 111 South Main and Regent Street developments. Could go on and on, but that partnership is unusual. It is, they make a terrific contribution to our downtown. And I look forward to continuing with that partnership, always looking out first and foremost for the city's interests and what our standards and, and policies and needs are, but also working with them to achieve great success for Salt Lake City. This question is from Marcus McDonald who, wrote, who writes, I would love to hear your approach on building community. As leaders, what have you done and will do to bring community with values, ideas, and support together on efforts to build a city that fosters growth, maintains diversity, and encourages us to work together toward common goals? Uh, Mr. Becker, we'll start with you. Yeah, thank you. I've spent my whole career uh, in my uh, in my public life, work with first with Governor Matheson, uh, in my own business for over 20 years, uh, as a planning commissioner uh, in the state legislature, and now as mayor, uh, working and focusing on what is it that makes communities work, how do we come together to achieve the best results. And we get the best results, and we get the best solutions. When we bring everyone to the table, we invite everyone, regardless of their background or interest, to share ideas and then to find the right solutions. Uh, we have incredible diversity in this community that isn't often recognized and not often enough appreciate, appreciated outside of Salt Lake City. And we need to always endeavor to be reaching out to folks who are less involved and who have less of an opportunity. Uh, I've developed an open government policy and approach and public engagement guide and Salt Lake Solutions and many efforts to continually bring people in and to provide for collaborative approaches and consensus solutions. Ms. Uh, yes, thank you. 
So one of the things that's not happening in our current city government is we are not diversifying who, even, who is even working for the city right now. We have a real obligation to reach out to our communities and make sure that we are mirroring the population that lives here, that our government mirrors who lives here. And we are not doing enough to really diversify our local economy right here in the heart of downtown. You know, we don't have a lot of cultural experiences that really truly reflect the 127 languages being spoken in Salt Lake City today. We could do much better to make sure communities are represented. And I think sometimes it takes somebody who is sitting before you as a minority saying, we could do better and we need to do better. Our city needs to be much more inviting to everyone of all walks of life. And that is something I will bring. It's a key piece to my administration and something I'm truly focused on and care deeply about. Thank you. Um, some people have suggested that the SLCPD should be done away with and the county's unified police department should handle policing needs for the capital city. Do you agree or disagree and why? And we'll start with Representative Biskupski. Uh, thank you. Um, you know, when I met with the Salt Lake Police Association to seek their endorsement, we talked about Unified Police Department, and we also talked about all of their unmet needs today. You know, they need more staff. Their cars, their fleet is in disarray. Uh, we're on a leasing program right now for our law enforcement cars with a huge balloon payment coming up. There is real concern amongst law enforcement. What I also said was, you should at least understand the Unified Police Department model. And if Salt Lake City PD wants to go to UPD, then I would help facilitate that. But in no way, shape, or form would I force that, or do I think that that is a solution that needs to be acquired. Um, and I, I think that discussion was very frank and open, and, and why I got their endorsement. Mr. Becker. Uh, it's of utmost importance when it comes to law enforcement, really all of our emergency services, that we have a seamless operation, regardless of whether you're in Salt Lake City or any other jurisdiction in the Salt Lake Valley and in the region. And in my time, and I can say to the credit of folks, whether it's around dispatch or police or fire or other emergency services, we really have taken big steps with Salt Lake County and our other neighbors, including UPD, to integrate our services. We also, though, need to recognize that Salt Lake City is different and actually holds a different standard than what we see in other surrounding communities. We are the dense urban area which has incredible diversity. We have to provide, I think, special and extra training, which we do, to reflect that diversity and the kinds of circumstances we face in our city. So I do not believe, based on my experience now as eight years and prior work, that we should merge those agencies. We need to continue to integrate coordinate and achieve the best success we can to provide emergency responses for our whole region. The next question is from Bruce Bingham who writes, how, and he underscored, how will you solve the homeless and panhandling problem? I'm going to start with Ms. Biskupski. So I've been meeting with multiple players involved in this issue and what I know so far is that um, the shelter needs to exist, but the shelter should be a place where people come initially and then are diverted into a service-based um, opportunity where they can obtain uh, transitional housing, where they can get intensive case management, where there is real opportunity for them to transition out of homelessness into low-income housing, and then to have a two-year follow-up program where we are staying in touch with you to make sure you don't fall back into homelessness. But really helping those who are capable of becoming independent again achieve that and not languish on our streets hoping to have a place to stay that night. Mr. Becker. I've been working on this persistent, really perplexing, complex issue from the time I came into office and meet regularly with the providers, with businesses, with residents, all around where our homeless facilities are and around homeless issues. There really are two different matters we need to deal with at the same time. 
one of the current impacts and effects of our homeless population and the horrible drug dealing that goes on that embeds themselves in and behind the homeless population. And it means firm law enforcement. For those who are criminals, it means protecting the homeless and giving them opportunities to be successful in working with our providers. And we are, I'd say for the first time in many respects, seeing some great success there. But secondly, and as importantly, is I convene with Mayor McAdams a services and a facilities effort where we have all of the players at the table to come up with an approach to providing long-term for, for, for our facilities to provide for our homeless, but also to deal with the depot area so we can achieve the success it can. We are on track in both of those regards so that we can have a clear and solid approach going forward that provides for our homeless and provides for this wonderful and growing neighborhood. Great. Thank you, Ralph Becker. Um, this question, Salt Lake City's growing recognition as a lifestyle city gives it a clear advantage in attracting businesses, employees, citizens, and entrepreneurial talent. What policies and infrastructures would you continue or enact to support and increase livability to serve our citizens and protect this advantage? So what would you do to make Salt Lake more livable and protect the advantage we have as a, as a lifestyle city? Um, and Mayor Becker, we'll go to you. Thank you. Well, when I ran for a second term uh, and was working as I have every time to look at what are the things that I would do and we should do as a city for the next four years, and I've done that again this time, uh, I developed what's called a livability agenda and looks comprehensively at all of the things that creates the lifestyle, the opportunities, the experience people want, whether they live here or move their businesses here. And we are seeing the results. The prosperity that I've mentioned and that we all know in this city is unparalleled. People are flocking to our city, even from some of the most popular cities around the country, whether it's Austin or whether it's Portland or whether it's resort communities, because we offer the combination of a wonderful urban experience with access to the outdoors and to amenities that are, we just don't see anywhere else. We need to continue to build on that. And that means we need to continue to provide the amenities, make smart investments and in infrastructure as a city, and partner with our business community and our neighbors around the region so that Salt Lake City continues to flourish and grow as the great American city. There's a few things that we should be doing. Uh, one, the council this summer decided to um, really start creating a city master plan for transportation. I think that should have been done quite some time ago, but it absolutely needs to be done. And that needs to incorporate walkable opportunities, and it needs to incorporate all different transportation, buses, bikes, cars. With that master plan will come the ability also to develop areas in our downtown that people really want to hang out in in the, in the weekend. You know, if we think about Saturday and Sunday after, afternoon, where do we spend our time? There's not really a place downtown that people are dri driven to, to want to come to. And yet we need to create those opportunities. People want to be in this downtown area. They want to live here, but they also want to have places to go to, to spend their weekends that have real amenities and opportunities for cultural experience. A question from a member of our audience says that every academic and activist source cites automobiles as by far the largest contributor to our air quality problem. What specific things are you going to do to make it easier for our citizens to get out of their cars? Yes. Ms. Biskupski, we'll start with you. Yes. One, we absolutely have to create a low-income housing along our transit lines. We have several people who are using cars just to get in and out of Salt Lake for their jobs because they can't afford to live downtown. I think that needs to change immediately. The other piece to this is I believe we need our own bus service in Salt Lake City. UTA is a regional service. I've met with them. I've spoken with them. They are able to provide some bus service, but nothing to the level that the people in our city really need or want to get around. Um, we also need the circulator bus system, and people in Sugar House wish that the circulator bus would have been established there before we built Sugar House the way we have developed it today. It is extremely congested. It takes very long time to get to and from 
um, anywhere on State Street to Foothill because of all the traffic in that area. Mayor Becker. Uh, thank you. Air quality, we know, is one of our most serious issues for the city, for everyone in the region. And, and air shed is a regional issue. Uh, I'm an environmental lawyer and planner and actually did my master's project around the Clean Air Act. So understand how it works and understand things we can do. And as noted by the questioner, vehicular emissions is the number one source of emissions. So we have to look at how do we reduce vehicular emissions? Well, it comes in a couple ways. One, we can clean the fuel, both coming out of the refineries and with the cleaner cars. Tier three, it's called. And that needs to happen and should have happened already. That's a state issue. Locally, though, we can set the example. And we do it by providing mobility options for people so they can more easily get out of their car. It certainly includes transit improvements. And those are happening, and we will see them happen if, on a plug, a referendum passes this fall. But it also means making it easier for people to bike and get around. It means having more walkable neighborhoods so people don't drive as much and can easily get to their parks. And it means uh, something like bike share, this incredible success downtown that is dramatically reducing vehicular emissions and giving people some great options in our downtown area for how to get around. Thank you. Um, the next question comes from Soren Simonson with Community Studio and Impact Hub, and it's, and it's a little bit um, esoteric, but I would expect that from my friend Soren. Describe your brand and company culture as mayor. Mayor Beckham. Well, I'd say the brand is livability. We are and should be the best place to live, to work, and to play. And that means meeting our diverse community's desires and needs. It means having a good range of affordable housing and market housing. It means making it easy for people to get around regardless of how they get around and contributes to cleaner air. It means having access to and protecting our mountains uh, so that this incredible unparalleled resource we have compared to anywhere else in the country is both protected and is accessible. It means in making smart investments as a city, but more importantly, partnering with everyone involved. So we make smart decisions. And we create this livability that we are renowned for more and more around the country as the hallmark of Salt Lake City. Could you state the question again? Because I Describe your brand and company culture. Company culture. Well, okay. maybe city culture. Sure. Come, yeah. so, what would your brand be? You know, um, for me, this, this seems more like a business-oriented question, um, so I'll answer it that way. <clears throat> Although our, our environment here, we all choose to live here. I came on a ski trip and I never left, so we live here for good reasons and it has a lot to do with the mountains. But the other piece to this is creating a real um, business culture that doesn't exist here in Salt Lake City today that is about our startups. This is a whole new economy that is coming into the fold. And we have a, a real opportunity to embrace it in a way that is not embraced today. You know, so creating a different culture of, of partnering with venture capitalists and partnering with our business schools and partnering with early funding to help startups uh, get off the ground and stay here and become real economic drivers, I think, is where I'll be heading. All right, this next question is about liquor laws. Uh, the Salt Lake Chamber of Commerce has certainly called on the state legislature in the past to do more to uh, loosen liquor laws and, and make more licenses available. Mm -hmm. How much should the mayor of Salt Lake City be involved in something like this? And let's uh, start with mm -hmm. Mayor Becker. <clears throat> Well, we have uh, encountered and addressed, I'd say, within Salt Lake City's own domain, this incredibly archaic accumulation of laws around liquor uh, when I came into office. In fact, if anyone wants to read some amusing history, look at the history that our attorneys put together on the history of liquor laws in Salt Lake City. Uh, so we needed to get clear out some things that were just silly impediments to business that work at the same time providing for safety for our public around people who drink. And we've done that now. We, for example, removed the two places per block face that allows now for the natural congregation and competitive uh, activities around, around liquor. Uh, the city has plenty to do within our own jurisdiction to try to make sure we provide in a safe way for people who want to drink, 
whether it's in our downtown or in our neighborhood commercial centers, and, and in a way that protects our neighborhoods and our population. Uh, but at the state level, I don't think we should necessarily get that involved, other than to make sure that people in our city have the opportunities they deserve. Representative Biskupski. You know, I think it's important for the mayor of Salt Lake City to lobby on issues on behalf of the business community here. Um, we, we are, the Medicare expansion thing is a prime example. We should have been on Capitol Hill lobbying for that expansion. Uh, we, have the, we have more people in Salt Lake City who fall in the gap than anywhere. But with that said, I don't think lobbying on Capitol Hill for um, better liquor laws that enable our economy to grow in a way that makes more sense for who is now living here and, and what is happening in the city is, is something that we shouldn't be engaged in. It affects our local economy. It affects businesses here. It affects development. And building strong re working relationships with the legislature on issues like that and others I think is important. Uh, the next question actually comes from me. It was one we provided in advance, and it's the one I'm the most excited about. Please say three nice things about your opponent, and Representative Biskupski, we'll start with you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, the mayor exemplifies a healthy lifestyle. He's clearly physically fit. Um, the bike program that Will is helping with, I think, is really a good thing that's happened in our city. And I would also say that um, the mayor has done a good job of cleaning up um, our buildings, our city buildings, to make them more green and make our fleet more green than it has been in the past. So I think those are good things that the mayor has done. Excellent. Ralph Becker. Uh, I commend uh, Jackie as the first openly gay elected official legislator uh, to bravely come into office and to to take that matter on head on very personally. And she showed great courage in that work. I also noticed in my personal interactions with Jackie and in watching her that she's obviously a very dedicated mother and I commend her. Because it's tough when you're doing the kind of work we do and you're out a lot at night to be able to do that. And I really think she's obviously extremely dedicated in that way. And finally, I want to thank Jackie. My mother recently died and Jackie sent me a sympathy card and I really appreciate that Jackie, so thank you. Excellent. We have uh, time for a one-minute closing statement with each of these candidates. Uh, since Ralph Becker had the first opening statement, we are going to let Jackie Biskupski go uh, first with her sure. closing statement. Sure. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I truly plan to foster a real startup economy here and help with that. I also have every intention of fostering um, development along our transit lines that enable our local employees to live and work in Salt Lake City. I also feel like we have a real obligation in our city as a, as a mayor to stay focused on all the kids. You know, we have about 80% of our minority children coming into contact with law enforcement before they even turn the age of 18. That statistic is startling. And it sets those kids on the wrong path. And, and I know with certainty that if we are implementing a very strong partnership with our Salt Lake City School District regarding education, and we are making sure that our students are meeting those goals, um, those education goals at grade level through mentoring and tutoring opportunities that we help, we help fund. I think we'll see different results coming for all the kids who are not graduating from high school. Mayor Becker, your closing statement. So I've spent a whole career, as I've mentioned, uh, working with people in a collaborative way, listening, finding solutions that address whatever issue and matter is before us. And we are seeing that reflected in this incredible success in downtown Salt Lake City and throughout our city. We had more value in building permits in 2014 than the three prior years combined. We've achieved the highest population this city has ever seen and it continues to grow explosively. The quality of life here, the quality of our city, while I've been mayor, has completely transformed and is reflected by the Chamber of Commerce saying we are in this great renaissance. 
but we have so much more to do. In our permitting time, we've actually reduced permitting time in half while I've been mayor through some technological improvements and working with our community. And Google Fiber located and picked Salt Lake City because of both the way we can deal with businesses and because of the quality of our community in using high tech. I want another four years to build on these successes, uh, to continue to make Salt Lake City this amazing place. And with another four years, I'm confident we can do that. So I ask for your vote. All right, thank you both very much, Mayor Becker and Ms. Biskupski. Uh, thanks also again to Mastery Connect for hosting us and through the Downtown Alliance for sponsoring this candidate's debate and forum. Now, we want to, of course, encourage all of you to get out and vote on Election Day, Tuesday, November 3rd. It is vote by mail in Salt Lake City, so make sure you get your ballots in. And of course, stay with Fox 13 for complete coverage of the election all the way up uh, to Election Day. For Jason Mathis, uh, I am Ben Winslow. Good afternoon. Thank you for being with us.